You may have discovered a delightful little nugget about your relatives that you want to add to your family tree. But how can you record that fact so it stands out in an ancestor's profile in Roots Magic? And what happens if Roots Magic doesn't have a place for you to put that fact? What can you do? Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics, and I love helping you have fun climbing your family tree and connecting with the past. With Roots Magic, a genealogy tree building program with free and paid versions, you can keep track of a host of details about your ancestors in an organized way. Today, I will show you how to add preloaded or custom facts to your family tree so that you can remember details ranging from alternative names to health facts and more. Before managing facts, you might need to know where to find them. After you open a file in Roots Magic, be sure you are in the People tab. Navigate to your relative on the Family Tree view and highlight their name. You will see their brief profile in the upper left corner of the screen. Or use the index box to find a name. Key a surname in the index search box and Roots Magic will filter results to that surname. Click on the name of the person you want to review. You will notice that Roots Magic will set that person as the root of the pedigree in the right panel. You will see a brief profile in the left panel in the upper corner. Now let's get to the good stuff. How do we add details to this brief summary? Click on the edit link beside the pencil icon. Roots Magic will open a separate window called edit person. Notice that your relative's names appear in the upper left dark teal bar. The edit person window allows you to manage all the details about a specific ancestor. Roots Magic helps you track parent and spouse relationships via the links in their profiles. With groups, I've used things such as living, Ohio settlers, and active research to cluster people within the tree into a group. Web tags are where you can track URLs to specific content on the internet. Below that section is the focus of today's efforts, the facts. If you see facts for your relatives, then you can turn that off so that you can focus on your target person. Click on the box beside show relative events. So the box is no longer checked. When you want to see your ancestors timeline in connection with their relatives, you can toggle this back on. Notice that the events for richer siblings no longer appear in this list. If you have researched a relative previously, you will see all the facts you may have gathered. Notice in my profile, I have the following details. Birth, residence, which appears frequently in Richard's profile. The numerous residence entries come from city directories that document him between the census years. Notice I can highlight his job and how it changes from bricklayer to police officer back to bricklayer again. Finally, those who turn on the LDS feature in their Roots Magic settings can also track LDS Temple facts. Whether you're starting a new profile or extending an existing one like Richard's, Roots Magic makes it easy to gain quick insights into your ancestors' timeline and biographical details. Before we discuss how to add facts types, let's find a fact. In this case, I have found a probate record for Richard Chamley. What fact type would I want to add to my database? If you said probate, you would be correct. To add a preloaded fact type to a person's facts list, click on the large plus sign in the light teal bar. Scroll to the fact type or use the search box and partially type the fact that you want to add. In this case, I typed PRO and could quickly find probate. Make your selection and click OK. Now notice that Roots Magic has added a blank line in the left window. In the top right pane, you will see Roots Magic is ready to receive the information you want to add. You can add the date, either key in a date like the one August 8th, 1906, that will work, or you can use the calendar. You can use the arrows besides the months or the drop down, 
And then within the year, you can type the year to advance and then click on the date. And while you're at it, learn which day of the week this event happened on. Click select and now that date appears. The other way to add a date is kind of interesting and it comes in handy with death dates and when you're trying to calculate a birth date from a death date. So let's click on this calculator. You can calculate the start date, the end date, or the age. Pretty neat. We're going to start by calculating the start date. So we have the death date, 8 August 1906. And then we're going to pretend that he was 76 years, three months and two days. And notice that Roots Magic will give me a start date and we can go ahead and click select. Next, we can add a place. Remember to be consistent with your place names, either historical or modern, and your abbreviation standards. As you begin to type, Roots Magic will load locations that you used before where you can click on them and improve your consistency. Throughout the process, go ahead and click on the save button so that you don't <laughs> lose your work. If you haven't keyed in the place before, you can click on the search icon to see recommendations from Roots Magic. In this field, don't put church names, cemeteries, or other details beyond city, county, state, or country, or the other variations for the country in which you're researching. Instead, put those details in the place details field. For instance, you can add the address 110 Bar Street, County Clerk's Office, St. Luke's Episcopal Church, and so forth. This habit is handy if you're trying to research by location and you want to know everyone buried in a specific cemetery. Roots Magic can help you create a report for that. So separate the details. In some fact types, you will have the option to add a description. For example, you might identify the type of a home, whether it was owned or rented and so forth. Not every fact type will have this description option, but if you see it, use it. Finally, you have a few research fact details you can record. Proof allows you to select between proven, disproven, and disputed. This can be handy when you have conflicting names, relationships, or other information. If you've gathered enough details about the fact to make a decision, then choose the appropriate answer. Primary. This is only a checkbox. You will check the box if you have a primary source, such as an original birth certificate. If you do not have a primary document for the fact, then leave the box unchecked. The document I showed you earlier is a will abstract, not the actual probate book, so I won't check this box. Private. Use this option if you want to hide your facts when you share details with others or online. The notes section should become your favorite panel. Now this notes field links to the note column in the line entry. However, you can access it when you're entering facts for the first time or even later. Add transcriptions, translations, discussions, and notes you've uncovered during your research. When you're finished, click the back arrow. Go ahead and click save so you don't lose that work. As good genealogists, we know that we need to add a reference to every fact that we add. We've discussed citations in previous videos, so I will refer you to those videos rather than walking through it right here. Click the arrow to return to our probate fact type. If you have saved a document to your computer, you can link the media to your fact type by adding new media or selecting it from previously added media. Tasks, and it's another topic we've discussed in a previous video, but let's wrap up with shared. Few people like to do duplicate work, so Roots Magic allows you to add one fact to multiple persons through the shared fact option. Click the shared fact for one person or shared fact multiple if the facts will be shared with multiple persons. Then select the relevant names. Once again, you can use the search box to quickly jump to the people of interest. I'm going to select Eveline and Harry David. 
and John Richard for now. If I need to come back, I can always come back and add more and click select. And now these three individuals will have this same fact added to their profiles. Click the back arrow and return to the entry page. As you're adding details to this fact type, you'll see the sentence window where Roots Magic has starter sentences generated from predefined facts. These sentences can feed your future narrative reports. Once you're finished adding all of your details to these facts types, notice that Roots Magic will update the left fact list panel with the new fact, and you can add more details by returning to the plus icon at the top. What happens if you have a task not available in the task list? If you saw the previous video about task types, you may have some idea of something additional you want to track. In this case, I have a newspaper clipping for Richard. This clipping is the first in a series of articles where Richard had found a child and wanted to become the child's guardian, but someone else got that privilege. Roots Magic does not have a predesigned fact type for newspaper clipping. Therefore, we will need to create a new one. After you click on design new fact types, this prompt will open up. Choose individual fact type. Add the following details. Enter the title of the facts that you want to add. In this case, I'm going to type newspaper clipping. Enter an abbreviation for Roots Magic to use when space on a form window is typed. And I'm just going to type news. Now you get to choose which facts that you want to appear on that prompt that we did for something like the probate. So you can add the date, the place field, and the description field. Not every fact will need all three. Some of them will only need one but check the ones that apply. Next, select whether Roots Magic should include this fact when you output content from your database into JEDCON files, online website HTML files, group sheets, and so forth. Roots Magic can assign the fact to roles and create sentence templates. The roles relate to how a fact connects to your ancestors, and the sentence templates take your fact and turn them into sentences for your narrative report. Since these two topics require a video of their own, I'll refer you to two articles on the helpful Roots Magic Wiki. The links for these will be in the show notes linked in the description box. Notice that after you create a new custom fact types, many of the options discussed earlier are now available for you to complete with the nuggets that you found. Before you go and start using fact types in your family tree, especially those custom ones, let me give you a few reminders. If you migrated your family tree from other platforms, you may see some facts that differ from other users. For instance, in one database, I found 1861 census record and daughter by second wife wedding, which was a note about a newspaper article. These facts appeared after I downloaded my family tree from Ancestry to Roots Magic. The newspaper article was from when I transferred newspaper clippings from newspapers.com over to Ancestry, and they don't really have this standard name transformation. But the 1861 Canadian census, I'm not entirely sure because I tend to prefer residence rather than the name of a census record. The main reason for mentioning this is to emphasize that every fact list in Roots Magic is database specific. In short, when you create custom facts, they're not transferable within Roots Magic from one database to another. Roots Magic says it's applicable only to the database in which you created it, meaning the custom fact. If you open another database and want to use the new fact type, you must add the fact type to the other database separately. What this means is when you build your family tree in Roots Magic and add those custom facts, you will need to create those custom facts again in an additional database you make. 
This also means that perhaps you will see items in your fact types list that differ from the predefined ones we discussed in the previous video. This is because, like myself, users created them in different genealogy programs before putting them into Roots Magic. For the first key point about the inability to transfer the facts, it's just something to be aware of. For the second point that I just shared, you may have to do some cleanup work if you see those facts that I mentioned and you don't really want to have them. Take time to add as many facts about your ancestors as you can. Do not limit yourself just to birth, marriage, and death only. You know you're no longer a beginning genealogist when you start adding facts to your ancestors' profile and link sources to those facts. If you have further questions, comments, or suggestions about what to include and cover about Roots Magic, let me know in the comment section of this video. And if you struggle with facts, be sure to ask your questions there and I will make sure that I get the answer for you. If I've given you value in this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, and share this with others. It's a great way to help our channel grow. And if you want more videos about Roots Magic, check the playlist right up there.